coming. Oh, the King is coming. I just heard the trumpet sounding. Oh, and now His face I see. Oh, the King is coming. Oh, the King is coming. Praise God. He's coming for me. Miss Karen, everybody serving us today. Come on. Woo. She, you know, she helps me with my dementia, probably. Playing old songs like that to where I can just keep remembering. It's true. Tell you what, man. I've done some work with some older folks, man. I'm telling you, and a lot of times it's those songs they can remember. You might, yeah, don't, 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 uh-uh, I'm telling you. You need to have you some good songs you sing and remember them. They're good for your mind, good for you. And I've gone to visit people, they, I mean, they, their mind is gone, man. There's nothing hardly in there, it don't seem like. And some of these places I've been in my life to visit people, and then I'll just pipe up a song. Jesus loves me, this I know. And then somewhere in the depth of what's seeming to be darkness, there's this song that will pop out of them. There's something about God's Word and God's songs that are, they're powerful, man, I'm telling you. So thank you, Miss Jaron, for helping me. Amen. Here we go. Let's go to the Word this morning. Now, you've got a couple of, if you're down low, you've got some hand rest for your mess, the message today. Holding off. It's one of those. Y'all ready or not? I'm going to let it rip. I'm going to tell the truth. What happens when we forget God? What happens? We're in a series called Lest We Forget. Memorial Day is centered right between Mother's Day and Father's Day. There's no accident. Memorial Day is right there. Memorial Day. It means remember. Your memory. But Memorial Day we remember. Those husbands, particularly, and sons, and brothers, and I know there's been women as well. I get that. A lot of them were kids, man. They gave their life for our country. They were some mama's and some daddy's kid. And so it's fitting that it's there between Mother's Day and Father's Day, these that we remember. But also when you think of Mother's Day... And Father's Day is coming. And Memorial Day. I think of family. 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 And what happens when we we forget God as a nation? Well, your families are going to be shot. The family is going to suffer in this country when we forget God. And so today's message is a strong message. Are you all ready or not? Last week was a great message. Very nice. I was very nice last week. I told us how not to forget God. Remember? Well, this ain't the same week. This week is what happens when we do forget God. And guys, as a country, we have forgotten God. You say what you want. Okay? I know the Bible says pray for those that have leadership and authority over you. It does say that, and we do need to pray for them. But you can also realize they've forgotten God. Okay? And the church, much of the church has forgotten God. We have a church here in our area just split. Why? Because they're choosing to go another way. They're choosing to, to say uh, marriage is not just between a man and a woman and all that anymore, and they're going to start preaching a little differently. Well, a lot of people said, well, my family ain't going to listen to it. You understand or not? Say, what's happened? The church is a mess. The country's a mess. Am I not telling the truth? Yes or no? Say. I just came back. Kim and I. There she is. By the way, I like your Winnie the Pooh shirt today. You pull that off pretty good, doll. Hey, bet. But uh, she and I just went to, uh, flew into Detroit. Flew into Detroit. It's unbelievable. I couldn't believe it. Empty. I flew into this big airport. I used to do trips through there a lot when I'd go to Israel and take groups to Israel years ago. We'd fly, uh, you know, Delta and KLM airlines, fly you overseas. Unbelievable. 
I'm walking through the airport. It's not what day? Friday. Friday's a big day, right? Yes or no? And I just couldn't believe it, could we, Kim? It was crazy. The parking garages. I think like they're half a mile long of parking garages. Empty. We just left Fort Myers, had to park out where we couldn't even find a place to park. The country's in a mess, guys. You hear me or not? I don't believe anybody's flying to Detroit to visit Detroit. It's the truth. It's unbelievable. In the 1950s, 1.5 million people in that city. About 10 years ago, a million. Today, less than 500,000. And I don't know where they're at. Yeah. Well, I went through the airport. I went through the airport. Our country's in a mess. Went through that airport. I will say a couple of things because we've got to have some commercials up front. Went through that airport, and it wouldn't take a... Well, it took my driver's license so-so, but it gave Kim's trouble, more trouble, when you stick it through that TSA thing or whatever. And I'd already passed. It was taking a while, again and again and again and again, again. And the lady looked at me with sort of a snide look. I'm good at looks, okay? Y'all don't realize y'all looking at me, and I'm good at your face. But anyway, the lady looked at me, and because it wouldn't take it, and she said, it's because of where you're from. Florida. You know a lot of the country don't like Florida. You know that, don't you? Because their towns and their cities are going to hell because of their policies and because of a lot of the garbage. Okay? And now the way they're going to get feel better about themselves is trashing us. So here's what I said. Well, I love where I'm from. I love Florida. How about that? That's right. That's what I like. Yeah. And Kim's like, ooh. <laughs> no, no. No, she's with me, ain't you, doll? I mean, she's, I mean I'm, on that one, boy, she's right there. We're, we're, t- we're together on that. But anyway, we went to, we're talking about the family today. We went to Toledo from there to Toledo, Ohio. I didn't realize. I thought, you know, I'm in Michigan. How am I going to get to Ohio? I mean, it's got to be a long way. It ain't been about an hour. So we drove to Toledo. And I did a funeral. And the reason I'm talking to you today is because I'm talking about the family. I went and did a funeral of a woman in our church. A woman in our church. One of the sweetest women you would ever know. Her sister attends here. Cousins attend here. Friends from the Toledo area. They attend our church. They've moved here from up in Toledo, from Toledo down here. One of the sweetest women I've known. I've known her for several years. She had a big heart, big heart, big heart. But she had a son, a son who was trouble, who had trouble. And she was a mother that wanted to love, wanted to help, but had a pretty pretty rough son. And so she went back home. She saw me here in October, took my hand, said, I'm going home. Now, home don't mean for a week. Home means she's going to give up months and months and months of her time to go home to take care of a person who can take care of themselves. She goes home. She'd done it before. And he murdered his mother. And this, this, is, this was horrible, a horrible situation. And what he did to his mother was he killed her. And the way he disposed of the body was horrific. It was several months ago. And so I knew her. Knew her well. And my own mother was murdered by my stepdad. The family is in bad shape in our country today. You hear me or not? So I went there. And you know why I went? Why I went? Because I love these people. I love them. But I went also because I'm one that can go. I know what it feels like to have somebody in your family that, that they're murdered. Not many people, not everybody knows what that feels like. I know what it is. I don't know what that pain they might feel, but I know something that feels similar, I bet you. So I went, but that's not the only reason I went. I went because that family 
wanted me to preach the gospel. And there was a crowd. Wasn't there, Kim? You had to stand, right? They got every chair they could find in that funeral home meeting hall. They're bringing them from everywhere. The place was packed. And I just told them the truth. How, what a precious woman this was. What a, this, this man killed one of the sweetest women who've ever walked the earth. Think about that. Isn't that crazy? That's how crazy we are. And how crazy people can be. And I shared Christ with them because this family wanted me to do that. And it wasn't some mealy mouth message. It was strong. Can you say strong? But it was done in love. But it was done just like I'm doing with you today, real and honest. And not lying to people. So anyway, the family's in trouble. I just came back from that. And while I'm in Toledo, I'm in Toledo. And watching the news. Watching the news. And what pops on the news? Another son the night before had killed his mother. And then they tell you one after the other, this rape, this murder, this happened, and this happened. That's our country! This is crazy. Yes or no? We're in a mess. What happens when you forget God? This happens. This happens. Let's talk about it today. I got a whole message. Y'all ready or not? Here we go. Let's go. What happens when I forget God? Raj, we're going to roll now. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith as it is written. Say it with me. The just shall live by what? But we're living by something else today. We're living by what we think. We're living by what our politics is. We're living by what some politician says. We're living to what some stupid preacher's preaching. You hear me or not? We need to live according to what God says. The just shall live by what? Faith. Faith. We have forgotten God. We have forgotten God's Word. And guys, this ain't just... Up yonder. No, it's us. It's in this room. We, me, you, we have forgotten. And I want you to go through the message with me today. And you see, don't worry about what somebody else is thinking. How about you worry about you today and me worry about me. And let's see how we can do a better job. Y'all hear me or not? So what happens when we forget God? Well, when we don't have faith. When we don't really believe. Here's what happened. What is faith, by the way, Raj? Say that out loud to me. What is faith? Say it with me. I believe God. We don't. We don't anymore. God has a way. God has His Word. We believe everything but that. And we're in trouble because of it. This nation is in trouble. And you think electing one man is going to fix it? What are you smoking? You and I, we can make the biggest difference in our family, in our family, in our family, in our family, in our town, in our school, in our churches. We can make the difference. And we need to do it. Faith. Where's our faith? The just shall live by faith. Verse 18. But we're not. What's the Bible say? For the wrath of God, wrath of God, is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness, all unrighteousness of men. Say that last part with me. Who hold the truth in... Now, if you're not careful, you'll read that real fast. That's why we're screwed up. We're holding the truth. We believe, but we're not living it. We're doing it in unrighteousness. We see it all the time. You let something bad happen, and boy, folks will start quoting the scriptures. We ever go see you know? We do it. We do it. People do it. Political leaders do it. That's not going to fly with God. We cannot hold to the truth, supposedly, and yet we are unrighteous as a people. Y'all hear me or not? Let's talk about it. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. God has showed it to us. 
Keep going. For the invisible things of Him, of God, from the creation of the world, say it with me, they are what? Clearly seen. Being understood by the things that are made. I have people, they, over my life I've had people say, well, you don't believe the Bible, do you? You don't believe in God, do you? Let me tell you why I believe in God. Because i got eyeballs. Okay? And i got a brain. You are telling me you can't go outside at night tonight and see stars. And you're so dense that you can't realize somebody must have made all this. Say, you see the ocean. You see the critters. You see life. You see my daughter had shore in the first service, my little grandbaby. You tell and got a little one back here, a little baby right. Can you tell me you you don't believe in God when you got a baby? What are you thinking? You've lost your mind. Yes or no? Thank you. The Bible says we can see it. We're without excuse. So you know why I believe in God? Because I can see things that He made. Now, does that get me to heaven? No, 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 no. But it sure gets me thinking. Doesn't it? But we need to put our faith in Jesus. That's for sure. But the Bible says we're without excuse. What happens when we forget God? Well, we're without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God. Neither are we what? Thankful to God. But we become vain in our what? And then our foolish heart becomes what? Let me ask you this. Just be honest with me. How many God honest truth you can't believe, you flat out can't believe, you'd have never believed you're seeing the crap you're seeing today in our country. How I many you just wouldn't believe it? I mean, you never thought of it, did you? You couldn't have thought of it. What? What's next? It's crazy. Is that true? We profess ourselves, though we get these vain imaginations, and then we profess ourselves to be wise, and then we become what? Now, if you're here with me the first day, if it's your first time with me, <laughs> you probably heard, boy, Pastor Gary loves Jesus and loves people. He's a loving man. I am. But I'm also a truthful guy. And the truth of the matter is, this country was founded on biblical principles. They were not perfect people, but they were very, very good, and most of them God-fearing people. And the principles they founded on were good, solid things from God's Word, much of it. And we are not those people anymore. And this country has changed. And we're in deep, 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 deep trouble. And that's the truth. That if you don't believe it, that's on you. But I'm telling the truth. And we think we're getting smarter all the time. AI now, artificial intelligence. You see it on the news all the time. AI, AI. I tell you what, you can have all the AI you want. we got the, some of the dumbest people in the planet right now. You hear me or not? Us included. Us included, guys. I'm throwing us in there too. I tell you, our intelligence ain't that bright. Okay? We profess ourselves to be wise and we, we're fools. And change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image, say it with me, made to what? Corruptible man, keep going, and to and a four-footed beast. And that last part said out loud, and to what? One more time, and to what? Can you imagine God in heaven looking at what we've done to Him? We have turned God into a cow. Did you know millions of people, probably over a billion, they look at cows and worship animals. Did you know that in our planet? Four-footed people worship monkeys. Yeah, you might have to find a little spot out back or your nursery or something, but, but we can do that back and forth because I love it. A lot of fun. Yeah, we'll see. See how it works out. Okay, it's no problem. It'll work out fine. But the bottom line is the things we worship today and call it God. You hear me or not? We worship ourselves. It's what I think, you know, so etc. 
So, back it up, Raj. Creeping things. Remember that word. Can you say creep? Just say creep. Creep? Can you say creep again? Who likes creeps? We've turned God into a creep. No wonder people don't want to follow God. We've turned God into a creep. That's what He says. You turn me. You don't think we're going to pay a price for doing that? Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own heart. That's us. To dishonor our bodies between themselves. Verse 25, say it out loud. Who changed the truth of God into a, a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the Creator who is blessed forever? Amen. All right. Y'all ready for the message? It'll go from here. You pr- All right. I like it too. Just want you to think with me. This is my words. If we will change God into a cow, to a monkey, to a tree, to a hmm, hum, hum. If we will change Him, don't be surprised if we won't change you. If we'll change God into a something that's creeping, we'll change your eight-year-old boy into an eight-year-old girl. Did you hear me or not? This is where we're going, guys. You mean you think you can change God? And you're not going to be changed? Look at our world today. It's sickening. You understand, yes or no? Doesn't matter what you believe, because I could care less. If you're crazy, you're crazy. I don't need to be crazy with you. Got it? Say. All right? It's just crazy. It is. It's crazy. Eight out of ten people that go through gender, whatever it's called, transformation, eight out of ten, according to recent studies, are living to regret it. You think you're going to change the truth of God into a lie and you're going to be happy and it's going to all work out for you? It's not going to work out. Keep looking. This is a line I don't want you to forget the message today. This is it. If you turn God into a creep, don't be too surprised if you don't become creepy. If you turn God into a creep, Don't be surprised if you don't become creepy. Ladies, do you like some guy that creeps around on you? Say. We don't like that. that That's what we're becoming as a country. Creepy. You hear me or not? It's the truth. Look at us. So, now here's the bad news for you today. History ain't on our side. But we're America. Uh, But he's God. And you've forgotten him. So history's not on our side. You might say, why, Clark? What are you talking about? Well, I'm glad you came today in case you think I'm just some wild-eyed God. You know, believe it or not, I have a college education. I know it's hard to believe. But anyway... But let's, let's don't even worry about me. Let's just talk history. History on our side. You know the fool, the Bible says, the fool has said in his heart, say it with me, there is. That, that Scripture, when you really unpeel it, a good way to say that Scripture is this way. The fool has said in his heart, no, God! No! I like my way better than your way. Hear me or not, say Let's look at it. Let's see the breakdown of the family today. The breakdown of the family. That's what we're talking about. Here's here's how we're starting it. The average lifespan of all the world's great civilizations have been about how many years? That's it. I don't care what you say. We're talking about history down through the ages. You mean that's it? Oh, yeah. 
How old is America in a couple of years? We're going to be how old? 200 and what? 250. So we're on borrowed time, baby. We're on borrowed time. Well, what nations are you talking about? 200 years. The greatest nations that have ever existed on this earth. Let's look. In his book, 1947, Ten Symptoms of Final Decay. Ten, ten Symptoms of Final Decay were observed in two of the greatest civilizations of all time, the Greek and Roman civilizations. He saw something. As anybody can see it, doesn't take a scholar. This was written 75 years ago. This is before Leave it to Beaver, probably. It was on TV. This is when I dream of Genie. You know, and all the great shows. Remember how, you know, America just was so pure, it seemed like. But it really wasn't. Stuff was happening. And look at us today. Well, what did he find, and what do we find today? What happens when America... When we forget God, what happens? Here we go. Can you say that out loud? The what? When you really unpeel the onion, what happens when we forget God? Well, God made Adam and Eve. He told them to have young'uns. When we forget God, and He loves us as people. He gave His own Son for people, for not animals. He didn't give His Son for your dog. Got it? Yes or no? And if that offends you, grow up a little. He gave His Son for people. Because people and families are the most important thing to God. He made us in His image and His likeness. So when we forget Him, we're destroying us. Well, what does it mean, Pastor? Well, look at what is the breakdown of the family? What did he find in his, in, his, in his writings? And what are we seeing today with the breakdown of the family? And what's happening to our country? And what has been happening? Number one, anti-family sentiment. I want you to think about when's the last time you saw Consistent shows on television that were building up the family. We'll answer this question. When's the last time you saw a show or a movie that was pushing a homosexual or a transgender agenda? You can be watching a perfectly good movie and all of a sudden they just stick it in. And guys, it's not just about Hollywood. This is in the church. This, is ha this has happened to us. It's in our families. I'm not trying to put us down or put somebody else down. I'm just, I'm just trying to tell the truth. The family's under attack. Who change the truth of God into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the Creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Anti-family sentiment. Family's the fundamental building block of every civilization. If you destroy the family, you've destroyed America. Did you hear me or not? Would you say families in America today are in trouble, yes or no? Deep trouble? And that's just y'all talking. And if you say even, to, you know, matter of fact, America, one of the few nations in, this, in the world, did you know we promote single parents? We will pay you to be a single parent. And if you have another child, we'll pay you more money. And if you get married, uh-oh, you're losing the money. What are we thinking? We are crazy people. You, you know I love you, but that don't mean I won't throw something at you. <laughs> Nothing hard, no, I won't. It'll be like my shoe or something. Anyway, here we go. Keep watching, guys, with me. Help me, Raj. Number two, so anti-family sentiment. You'll destroy your country, 
that start trashing the family. Number two, meaningless marriage vows. You wouldn't believe sometimes when people want me to marry them, they go, can we have our own vows? I say, get you another preacher. It's okay. Or if they want to have their own vows, I'll go, you can have your little vows that you're going to write about butterflies and sunsets, but I'm going to write about till death do us part, for better or worse, richer or poorer. Marriage doesn't mean anything hardly anymore in our country. Meaningless vows. The Bible says, without natural affection, truce breakers. Yeah, but you don't understand. I know certain marriages are really, really hard. And when there's, there's uh, you know, physical violence and things, I understand that. I don't like my own mother was murdered. I get that. I, I get that. But the bottom line, that's not what I'm talking about. People don't respect marriage anymore. They don't stay true in their marriage and to their covenant. This is what he found that broke down these other civilizations. Covenant breakers. Keep going, buddy. Truce breakers. Go. Number three, you're going to destroy your country? No-fault divorce. We're talking about break down the family. What happens when we forget God? What does no-fault divorce mean? It's a divorce where the dissolution of marriage requires neither a showing of wrongdoing of either party nor any evidentiary proceedings at all. What does that mean? I just ain't feeling like I'm feeling for you anymore, so we're done. How many ever had that happen to them? It's terrible. Me and Kim, we've been struggling. Why wouldn't we struggle in the world we live in? We have a 12-year-old, is that right? We have a 15-year-old. We have a 27-year-old. We have a 33-year-old, just had a baby, got a 35-year-old. But she was hurt in the past. I was hurt in the past. We're living in this generation. We're in this culture. It's hard. Got it? And some days our feelings aren't as good as the feelings were the day before. That's true. It's true. So she and I have been getting help. You go to a church where the pastor and his wife are getting some help in their marriage. Uh, Yeah. Even the church today, even the church that we want everything to be perfect while Rome burns. We want everything to be perfect. Guys, our planet is not perfect. We are in a bad situation. And we need each other. We need each other. We need Him. Because quitting is easy. Isn't that true? And if you're hurting today, I'm sorry. This message is hurting you some. I don't mean to hurt you. But I'm trying to say God is where we need to get back to. We can't turn Him into a creep and us not be creepy. We've got to put Him back where He belongs. And that's where He is up on the throne. And we need to be obedient to Him. We need to trust Him, even when we can't see. That's called faith. Amen. Number four. You want to break down the family? Acceptance of adultery. Instead of, sir, loving the wife that God's given you, I've got to watch my language. You're messing with with the lady down the hall or somewhere else. And you think you're right and you think you feel good. You're a bum and you're a disgrace. Okay? Got it? Yes or no? And ma'am, same for you. It's not acceptable. It's not acceptable. Adultery is not acceptable. doesn't matter what you think. You think it because you've forgotten God. And unfortunately, you, that family, those children are going to pay a price because of you. So goes the family, so goes the country. 
Wherefore God gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own heart, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. You turn me into a creep and see if you don't get creepy. Acceptance of alternative marriage forms and sexual perversions. Have I said anything that's not happening? Acceptance. For this cause, God gave them up to vile affections. That's what we used to, that's what the Bible calls behavior outside of the marriage. You understand that or not? And I'm not trying to stand up here as some guy holier than now that doesn't have some wicked thoughts and have done things in my own life. We need to get right with God. We need to get back to Him or we are gone as a country. Even the women did change your natural use into that which is against nature. I never thought I would see today when a grown man could say I'm a woman and now I can enter women events and sporting events. You're an idiot, okay? Whoever's running this stuff is nuts. Yes or no? Say, come on, what are you doing? You're crazy. But it just gets crazier all the time. You hear me or not? I know it ain't popular for some of you today. You know why? Because you have forgotten God. You're mad at me. That's okay. I can take it. I've done plenty wrong. Where I'm mad at me too sometimes. And I bet for you too. Yeah. Likewise, men leaving the natural use of a woman, burning their lust toward one another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. This is us. When we get to a place in our country, we're accepting alternative forms of marriage and all kinds of perversions. This is what he found in 47, 1947, based on a study that happened 2,000 years prior to that. History's not on our side. You understand? I'm not saying it's easy. I'm not saying inside your family. When these discussions come up, it's not it's not easy. It's hard, isn't it? Yes. What's happening next? Well, after you've destroyed the marriage, if you want to effectively ruin your country, stop having kids. Stop having kids. Did you know America... Is going down, 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 down in reproducing children. Doesn't mean our population's not going up because we've got open borders and things. And I hear that. And we want to be a land of the free. I still like people to, if I've got to buy by the law, I'd like for somebody else to have to do it too. Amen. Say. I think this seems like the right thing to do here. But anyway, let's keep going straight. Let's go down the road. Bottom line is stop having kids. You can't, you can't keep your culture. You can't keep your values. You cannot keep America when you stop having kids. Now I want to put it on you, the church, today. If you're not already really ticked off at me here, I really want to tick you off now. Last week, I talked about a man who said it's hard to be an American. Remember? Pathetic. I want to put it on you today. Many of you probably think or have said, I wouldn't want to raise children in today's society. Here's what I want you to do. Shut up and never say that again. Children are a gift from God. Children are a gift from God. You know what? If you keep saying that, young families in this church, in this town, just might hear you. They just might hear how much you don't want to raise children today, and maybe they'll quit on their kids. Did did you lose me on that or not? Kids are a blessing. Having children are a blessing from the Lord. Just because leave it to beaver ain't around anymore doesn't mean that kids don't matter. And we need to have children. We need to love our kids. Yes or no? Amen. Say! What are we doing? So catch yourself. Catch your... I wouldn't want to raise children today. Well, I'm sorry if society was a better place than when you... But you know what? We still need kids, don't we? So you're welcome. Without natural affection, it is not normal for a person, a human, to not want if they're able to have children. Do you hear me or not? It's a good thing to have kids. Not everybody can. 
I understand. But it shouldn't be something we do not want. When, there, when civilizations are in decline, there's in t- increased disrespect for parenthood. Ashley and Charles, are y'all here? This family right here are some of my favorite people on the planet. They have eight children. Can we thank the Lord for them? Amen. I don't mean to embarrass you guys, but I will say this. They go places sometimes with their children, and people look at them like they're freaks. This is what America should look like right there. That's what America should look like right there. Ashley came to an event here at the church. This is how it's infected the church. She came to an event here at the church, brought a couple of the kids, not all the kids, and someone told her, basically, you're not welcome here with the kids. This is a, an adult event for... Can you never talk like that to people that come to our church again? Yes or no, say. All right? Did you hear what I just said? You're a crazy person. If a mama comes with kids and it's a woman's event, how about you volunteer to say, you know what, how about you get to go and take a break and be with the ladies and I'll go over here and help with your children for about an hour or something. I'm ugly today, ain't I? When I got this message, I told, I knew it. I said, this thing, I mean, we'll have about 50 to 100 less next week. But I think I've been telling the truth. And I've been trying to say, guys, Kim and I don't have all the cat by the tail either. We're trying. I'm not trying to preach it from a position that we're better than you. We're not better than you. We are you, and some of you are so much better than we are. The answer is not putting one another down. The answer is turning back to Him. Because we've forgotten God. Having kids today ain't such a good thing anymore. You know, you know how we know that? Abortion on demand. And guys, I don't care what your politics is. I'm a conservative. You know that. But it's a sad thing. It's a sad thing. It's a sad thing. I'm going to say it. When the Democratic Party, if they really want to beat somebody, they're really pushing this abortion hard now against their candidate. That you don't want abortion and, the, and we want it over here. It's sad that that's what you got to run on. The killing of a kid. Did you hear me or not say? That's sad. That's sad. It ought to be a shame. That ought to be one thing everybody in America could agree on, that kids matter, kids have value. Okay, you hear me or not? That should be one thing we could all agree on. But when you forget kids, they don't matter anymore. You know, that's just the way it is when you forget God. We profess ourselves to be wise and we become fools. I want my freedom. I don't want to bring kids into this world right now. And I get that. I've got own family members that say that. It's not just it's not just other folks. It's in my family too. But kids are great, man. And then if you do have kids, if you want to finally destroy your country, I'm done with this one. Aren't you glad? Can you believe we're having communion after this? We need communion after this. It's a wonder He even lets us have it. It's a wonder God even says have communion, to be honest with you. If I was Him, I would take all my stuff and go home. But God is a God of love and God's a God of mercy. And He knows how far we've fallen. He knows. But if you finally want to destroy your country... According to what was written in 47 and a, and, a, and a thorough look at other civilizations, stop keep teaching your kids right from wrong. Did you know today in a lot of our cities in this country, we're teaching our kids without even knowing we're teaching it, that you can steal up to like a $1,000 and you're not going to get in trouble for it? Is that true or false? Absolutely true. Absolutely true. In many of the countries, uh, many of the cities, not countries, cities. It used to be other countries maybe, but it's cities now in our nation. You can just get by with it. We're not teaching kids right from wrong. We're not doing it at home. It's tough. Got a, a lot of juvenile delinquency a person between the age of 7 and 16 who commits an act which would be a crime if that person was an adult. It's happening everywhere. The Bible says when you do this, same passage of Scripture, when you forget God, 
And God, oh, by the way, God, this isn't God being mean. God's being nice. You need me. You need me, he says. You need me and you need my word. Without me, you're crazy. You need me. So it's not like he's picking on us. No, this is what happens. You don't have him, backbiters, haters of God, disrespectful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things. What's that last one? That's what happens. That's our country. It's interesting when you check on juvenile delinquency websites, I'd encourage you to do it today. Sure, go, go. Go check it out. Go check it out. A common statement will keep, a fact will keep showing up. What do we need to do to combat juvenile delinquency? What do we need to do? You'll see it on your websites. Of what, it'll be somewhere in what needs to be done. Of course, more money. We'll throw more money at it. More money, more money, more money. Here's what shows up. The most logical starting place for preventing juvenile delinquency, say it with me, is in the what? So it goes back to what happens when we forget God. You have to break down the family. And how do you fix the breakdown? Oh, you need the family. Well, how can you have the family when you don't have the God who made the family, but you've turned Him into a creep? You don't think you're going to be creepy? As the family goes, so goes the country. We the people have no one else to blame. It wasn't like we had a bad start in this country, was it? No. It was we the people when this great country started, and it's we the people today. America will not keep her freedoms by blaming and pointing the finger at one another. But rather when we the people fall on our knees at the feet of Jesus Christ. Let's thank the Lord for His Word. We're done. Amen. Praise the Lord. Bottom line, families matter and they matter to God. Amen. Let's get upon our feet. I know that was a hard message, especially if you're just visiting for the weekend. You're like, wow, we went to the beach. Let's go to church.